We will now take our next question from Jason Powell of ProWrestling.net. Please go ahead. Yeah, yeah Jason, Paul, with, with the uh, SmackDown taping, or just SmackDown in general, I should say, moving to Fridays in October, that's obviously going to change the WrestleMania schedule going forward. If you have your way, would you rather hold the TakeOver show on the Thursday or Saturday next year? Well, I think uh, from a live event standpoint and from, I mean, just speaking off the top of my head, like I think that a, a weekend, just just from a, as people go to events and watch things, uh, on the network and everything is Saturday is probably better than a Thursday, but obviously that's something we're working through now of the dates and when things will uh, be and be on sale. The, the, the shift to SmackDown to to Fridays um, and being on Fox and broadcast and everything, it, it fundamentally shifts a lot of things for us, so that's all stuff we've been doing a lot of work on since the moment that deal was announced, um, and we'll do it right probably to and beyond the moment we uh, do that first show. It, it's going to change a lot of what we do, and, and there's a lot of work to be done on, on what that means. And also with Sasha and Bayley saying they'll defend the WWE women's tag titles against NXT talent, is that an indication that we won't be seeing NXT women's tag titles anytime soon? Um, I, 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 again, I would say never say never in this scenario, but right now where you have the ability to for those tag titles to run across all brands, if it stays that way, um, then I'm, I'm not sure uh, you would have the need for it, but we would see. You know, it, a lot of times it comes down to uh, having a depth of a roster to be able to have a singles and a tag division and, you know, and everything else and, and not have it be just one or two teams and randomly put together groups or whatever it is. So we would want to make sure that we have the, the depth of talent and everything else to be able to deliver uh, to all the brands if, if they have tag titles, if they don't, whatever that is, but to be able to deliver on all levels to all of them um, and, and making sure you can do that before you just say, well, what if you need to have tag titles, you know? Very good. Have fun at the Hall of Fame. Thank you. We will now take our next question from Jim Barcelona of Miami Herald. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you, Paul. Hey, as the NXT brand has grown, have the numbers increased in the amount of signees these days at the Performance Center from the early days at the Center? I'm, I'm, in which way do you mean? How, how many people are there? Correct. In the amount of talent and signees that are there from the early days compared to now since the brand has grown. Yeah, oh, absolutely. You know, um, we, we it, obviously it shifts depending on you know, uh, as we're having tryouts and bringing new people in and recruiting and, and you know, we just got done a, a, a large tryout in India that had about 75 talent at it. Um, we have another coming up in China um, as we're, you know, bringing in talent from all over the globe as we're continuing to build a pipeline in. Some are continuing to go out, some don't make it, some continue to, you know, get called up to to Raw or to SmackDown or, or to shift even, you know, and that will happen more and more over time to shift to the UK or to shift to hopefully other brands down the line, um, the ability to be able to move it all around. But, you know, the Performance Center has grown. It's We have uh, at any given time in the ballpark of a little under 100 talent um, in the facility there. And then you have, you know, another 30, 40 in, in the UK. Um, so it's, it's grown exponentially. A large percentage of that is international. You know, I think 45%, somewhere around that, is, is international from 22 different countries. And so there's a, a lot of mix there. But, um, you know, it's, it's constantly trying to evaluate the pipeline of people that have a level of experience. And I don't necessarily mean they necessarily came in with experience. They might have come, been homegrown, but they get to a level where they have now have the experience that they're at the upper deck or, or in between. So you want to have the, the experience that are sort of NXT talent that are on TV all the time. You want to have that kind of next level that's waiting to, to have the spot open up on NXT. You want to have a, a group below that that's waiting for that spot and then a group below that that's just kind of getting started and, and trying to learn learn the ropes. It takes time to do this and, and um, constantly having that developmental pipeline of beginner all the way through 
through to to um, you know to to doing what they do at takeovers and and being a top talent in the world. So you always want to kind of have that mix, but it has grown exponentially. Um, in some ways, the building is full. Yes. You know, Paul, and with that. Have there been talks of increasing the number of house shows, working more with Evolve and even other groups, or even considering developing another brand in the States? Yeah, so I think that as we, obviously that stuff that we want to evaluate obviously all the time as we move forward. Um, you know, NXT itself in the U.S. does somewhere in the ballpark of a little under 200 live events a year. Um, between Florida and is there room for growth on that? Yeah, we also want to make sure though that it is uh, done in a way that is uh, profitable and not, uh, you know, obviously a drain or anything else. And, and NXT is a profitable brand from the standpoint of their live events and everything else. So, you know, we 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 just, you constantly want to evaluate that and then make sure that you have the enough talent as call ups happen and everything else that you have enough to support all those things. Um, all of that is constantly being evaluated, whether that's additional brands, whether that's, you know, you, you see us working with Evolve or others, Progress, ICW internationally, um, you know, those, those talent opportunities, and it's constantly being evaluated. Thank you, Paul.